Good evening and welcome to our campfire worship service here. Let not your hearts be troubled. Welcome to our campfire worship tonight, when we gather not in fear, but we gather in faith and in hope and in love. Welcome to our campfire worship. This is our prelude for the evening. Let not your hearts be troubled. Be not afraid. Heaven and earth have been gathered. Be Welcome to our campfire worship here tonight. I'm glad to be here. My name is Pastor Jeff Engholm. Grateful to be here. Also grateful that Dana Vrasper is joining us here tonight. Also glad that Robin Behrens is here tonight, working behind the scenes to make all this happen. We're also glad that you are here tonight. If you're here with us, sign in below, check in below, or punch one of those like buttons or whatever. Let us know. Let everybody who's worshiping tonight know that you are here with us. This is not just about us or even just about you and me. This is about all of us gathering together here tonight to worship together around the campfire, together under the tree of life. I've got my tree of life shirt on tonight. We're gathering underneath the tree of life here tonight. Glad that you are here with us. If you like a bulletin, you can find that at our website, trin.org. Just scroll down. Uh, where it says online services and you can find a bulletin you can also find this sheet the sharing God's story sheet that has questions and conversation starters that you can use with your people wherever you are whoever's with you or just alone to think about yourselves we'll get to those questions here in a minute later in our worship service tonight we're hearing a story about forgiveness we're storing about, uh, hearing a story about forgiveness and how hard forgiveness is, but with the power of God, we can forgive others. And so we sing this song asking God simply to open our lives, open our hearts, and to open our eyes. See you. 
We pray together this prayer. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for this day, for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past, and we entrust to you this night. We rest peacefully, for you are our help, and you neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. Amen. Tonight, for our Tree of Life litany, at the end of each line that I say, you will say, our roots of faith run deep. Sing to the Lord, O heavens. Break forth into singing every forest and every tree in the earth. Our roots of faith run deep. On the day of the Lord, the trees of the forest shall sing for joy. For the Lord comes to bring justice to the earth. Our roots of faith run deep. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills shall burst into song and all the trees shall clap their hands. Our roots of faith run deep. There is hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again. Our roots of faith run deep. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. Our roots of faith run deep. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They shall be like trees planted by streams of water. Our roots of faith run deep. We gather tonight beneath the tree of life, thinking about what it means to be a part of God's tree of life. There's a couple questions on here. I just want to run by you here. Think about them yourself, or if somebody's with you, talk about them right now as we sing our next song. The first one is, what were the, the best parts and the worst parts of this day today? What was the high for you? What was the low for you? And secondly, like we're going to hear in the story in a minute about Joseph, who often felt alone, but knew eventually that God was with him. How have you been feeling God with you today in your highs and in your lows? Think about that. Talk together as we think about what it means to stand tall as people of faith. tonight is from the book of Genesis and it goes like this now Jacob loved Joseph more than any other of his children and he made him a coat of many colors but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers they hated him and they conspired to kill him they said to one another Let's throw him into this pit here in the wilderness. Soon after, when some traders passed by, 
His brothers lifted Joseph up out of the pit and sold him for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took Joseph to Egypt. But even though he started out as a slave, Joseph grew strong in Egypt and became one of the king's closest advisors. Years later, when a famine struck the land, Joseph's brothers came to him looking for help. They said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, fell down before him, and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Even though you intended to do me harm, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people. So have no fear. This is the word of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God Almighty, who teaches us how to forgive. Amen. Maybe you've heard this story before about Joseph, the favored son, and his brothers, the jealous sons. Their father, Jacob, has 12 sons, and you'd think he would know better than to have a favorite. I mean, how does that work? How do you have a favorite child, a favorite son, a favorite Daughter, how can anything good come out of that? I know it happens. I know of families where there are favored children. Brothers and sisters are put at odds against one another because they are not all loved and appreciated the same. And it causes pain. Anybody... Anybody remember the Smothers Brothers? They were a comedy team from many years ago. Tommy and Dickie Smothers. They would get into one of their funny fights and Tommy would be losing the argument and he would just get mad and he would say finally, Oh yeah, well, well mom always liked you best he would say to his brother. And that was his excuse for losing the fight or losing his temper or doing whatever dumb thing he would do. Mom always liked you best. And since mom always liked his brother best, he would say, he had a built-in excuse to act up. It was a funny routine, but I've seen it play out in families where it was not funny at all. The sibling rivalry turned into painful arguments. If you have any idea what that's about, then you get today's story. Now Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children. Stop right there. This father loved one son more than all the rest. Nothing good can come out of that. Jacob loved Joseph the most. He treated him the best. He made him the famous technicolor dream coat, the coat of many colors that, who knows, it might have looked something like this that he got to wear in front of everybody and prayed it around in front of all of his brothers. He got a special coat. He got special treatment. He got a special place in the family and the rest of the brothers got jealous. And why not? I mean, can you blame them? I would be jealous too and so would you. And their anger and their jealousy grows and grows until one day they see their chance to get rid of Joseph and they sell him off as a slave. But in the rest of the story, Joseph actually does quite well as a slave off there in Egypt. 
He moves up in the ranks of society, becomes one of the king's right-hand men, and years later, when a famine strikes and the brothers need help, they go to Joseph, hoping that he won't treat them in the same way that they treated him. In fact, when they do come to him, they simply ask that they might be treated as slaves and not as family, just so that they might survive. But Joseph chooses not to treat them as slaves, but he does treat them as family, and he welcomes them back with open arms, and he forgives them. Now, I know this story is about forgiveness, how God forgives us, how we are called to forgive others, just like it says in the Lord's Prayer. But this story is way messier than that. Yep, I know in the end, Joseph forgives his brothers for their wrongdoing, as he ought to do. But what about... What about Jacob? What about Jacob, their father? The father who favored the one son over all the rest. Wasn't that a kind of wrongdoing on his part? What about forgiveness for him? Now what about Joseph himself, this favorite son, who kind of enjoyed being the favorite son, who kind of flaunted that in front of his brothers? What about forgiveness for him? I know it's often easy to think about forgiveness as being just simply a one-way street. One person does something wrong and the other person forgives them. But life is way more complicated than that. It's rarely a one-way street. In fact, it's rarely a two-way street. Isn't life more like a complex system of streets and roads? You know, kind of like Spaghetti Junction in downtown Minneapolis where all the roads converge and come together and twist and loop around and then twist around some more again. Which is simply to say this, that we're all in need of forgiveness at some time or another. And we're all called to forgive each other at some time or another. And who can keep track of all of that? And if you do try to keep track of all of that, how do you keep score with it all? And when you're keeping score of it all, in the end, who's winning and who's losing? Because if you're going to keep track of it all, you're going to end up with winners and losers. And then, I mean, but is that what life is all about? Maybe in the end, what we learn from this story is that forgiveness isn't simply an act you perform once and be done with it. It's more a complete way of living. We live in forgiveness all the time, giving it, receiving it. Forgiveness is simply a way to live a way to a new life. Kind of like breathing. We inhale, we exhale, and with every breath in and every breath out, we receive life. Isn't that what forgiveness is all about? Giving it, receiving it, and in the end, just letting go of it. Letting go of that hurt. Letting go of that anger. Letting go of that pain. Here, do this. Make a fist right now. Yeah, make a fist right now. Close it up really tight. Yeah, just be mad for a second. Be mad. Be angry. Be frustrated at whatever. Just do that. And now, now open now just open your, open your hand for a minute. Open that fist. Open that hand to receive what God has to give to you right now.
I know it's just a goofy exercise, but doesn't that feel better when you reach out with that open hand to God and to those around you? This story about Joseph and his brothers reminds us of the power of forgiveness. And this story reminds us of how God is in the midst of it all, empowering us to do what we can't do on our own. That's especially important to remember now. In the midst of the COVID, when everything seems kind of tense, and everything seems unfair, and there's simply so much loss in all of this. Of course, unlike the story of Joseph, in our story, there are no favored children. We're all in this together. We're all dealing with this the same. But as we pull together, as God pulls us together, we do come together by the power of God. And by the power of God, we will walk forward together, walking in hope, walking in peace, walking in forgiveness. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We are all family. We are all connected as the family of God. I don't remember seeing you around. You must be from the other side of town. You look a little bit strange to me. But that's all right. I like variety. We're family. sister named Betty Sue A little brother he's above a loop My uncle Benny and my auntie May A little crazy hey but she's okay We're family We're family I need you You're standing hand in hand Let's hear you singing all across the land If love has found you then let's have a nod We're living in the family of God We're family It's time for now. It's time for the sharing of the peace, the sharing of the swag. S W A G, smiling, waving, and greeting each other. So smile, wave, and greet whoever's with you out there. We're smile, waving, and greeting here, all of us together. If it's just you, that's fine. It's not just you. You're connected here with all of us. So I'm glad to see you and you. And yep, you way in the back there. Glad you're here for our campfire service. And don't forget, share your peace now with us. And share it later. Someone's waiting to get a text or a phone call or an email from you. Send God's peace. Send God's swag out their way. 
We're also receiving an offering here tonight. I simply want to say thank you for your generous offerings that you continue to support us with here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Watertown, Minnesota. Thanks to those of you who are finding us in the mornings when the office is open and dropping off your offering envelopes. Thanks to those of you who are sending them in the mail. Thanks to those of you who are texting us with your gifts and your offerings. And thanks to those of you who are finding more online ways of doing it. If you want to explore more online ways or all the ways you can share your gifts with us here, go to our website, trend.org slash give, and uh, you will find more ways to uh, do that. I simply want to say thank you for your gifts, your generosity to support us here at Trinity Lutheran Church. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths never taken, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing song is about the power of God, the power of forgiveness, the power of life and love, the power that makes a difference in our lives, in the lives of all those around us. You gave your life to make a difference. You gave your life to make a change You welcomed all to your table You're calling us to do the same I want my life to make a difference Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Go in peace. 
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you for joining us here tonight for our campfire worship. Thanks to Dana and Robin for joining us here tonight. Don't forget this Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. We gather for online worship right here. Uh, same place as you're finding us now. And also, this Sunday uh, morning, we're starting, no, not Sunday school again. It's our God Squads. Yeah, it's kind of like Sunday school, but it's going to be very different. We're going to gather outside. If you're around in the area, uh, three-year-olds on up through fifth grade. We have lots of things going on. Well, you'll find out when you come here this Sunday morning. 10 o'clock, come, bring your folks, bring the whole family. Why not? Come gather outside here. We're going to have a great time this Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, three-year-olds through the fifth grade. It's going to be great. And until then, don't forget to stay calm, stay connected, and shine on. The chorus, a couple times. Yeah. I want my bride. Yeah.